Hello guys and welcome to a new Steel Division video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you the battle group overview for the 21st Panzer Division. Now this is a deck that I've really started to like recently. It has a lot of interesting options for each phase and plays very well into phase A versus the enemy French deck and the third armoured deck. You can use the Panzer 35s really to do a great job in the early game if you use them um, smartly, I would say. So let's jump straight in and look at the Recon. So the Recon in this deck is actually quite good. You have access to two cards of the Alf Clara with the SPW-222s. Now the thing that makes these guys so fantastic is the fact that they are two-star veterancy. That means that the 222 that they come in with is also two-star veterancy. And a 20mm autocannon at three-star veterancy, alongside support vehicles with command radius, is incredibly potent and definitely something to take full advantage of, which is why I use Alfklera at phase A. I don't use any Speertrup. They come in with the half tracks and they also come in with the Kubels, making them relatively cheap. However, I find I have enough recon with the Alfklera and the 222s to just basically go with them at the start of the game. Furthermore, the recon in this tab gets even better when you realize you can bring in both the SBW-231s and 233s in phase A. And generally, I actually bring in both of these units quite often. The SPW-231, fantastic unit for fire support, finding units for your own uh, tanks, especially the Panzer 35s, works very well in conjunction with those because it can pin down enemy AT guns and also enemy infantry that's getting too close to your tanks. The 233, however, this is fantastic for higher ground. This uses uh, very high optics and can make full use of the 1000 meter range to engage targets at its, ma at its maximum range. Very, very useful unit and I do bring in both of these at phase 8 most of the time. So that's why I don't have any cards of extra ones in phase B or phase C. However, if you find you're not using them in phase A, definitely swap them out for phase B cards. Phase C cards, maybe not so useful. As we move on to infantry, we can see that I do very much love my Panzergrenadiers. I'm bringing in the card of Panzergrenadiers in Phase A. Always worth having at least one command infantry in Phase A, in my opinion. And then I've got just Panzergrenadiers, 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 and a Pioneer Squad. Now, in Phase A, I bring in the Panzergrenadiers in the U-304s because you're kind of forced to, and that's basically your infantry for phase A. You only have six infantry, so use them sparingly. Their half-tracks definitely provide the fire support you need, so alongside a command infantry you get, you know, one star Panzer Grenadiers and half-tracks. It's not too bad, definitely could be better, but... Um, just make sure you use fire support from the other tabs. For example, the 222s from the recon tab definitely help out your infantry in the early game. Moving into phase B, I bring in cards of pa um, Panzer Grenadiers in the Opa Blitzes. You can get them also in the half tracks. However, I find that I'm always in a hurry to bring in more Panzer Grenadiers when I reach phase B. And for 35 points, you can't really go wrong. I just spam these infantry wherever I need them. They have Panzerfaust, very, very useful and uh, great for just holding the line wherever you need to and also for just pushing very quickly as well. Now, if I need something in half tracks in phase B, it's the Pioneers because these guys need to get close to do the damage. They do have one MG34. However, they also come with the 22 AP power grenade, which uh, blows up enemy infantry if you can get in range. Very good for like flattening enemy like buildings for example that the enemy are entrenched with that you are basically right next to. As for the Panzer Grenadiers, well they come with the two MG42s which uh, is why I generally prefer them 
over pioneers. Gem pioneers, again, if you like flames, bring them in. I personally don't particularly find napalm very useful and I find that in this deck especially you need to be getting as much of useful availability as you can on your infantry which is why I go for three phase B cards instead of three phase A and two phase B because I find that the availability going into phase C is definitely what you need. Same reason I don't bring in MG42s. Only getting three of these, if it was maybe four I might consider it, but only getting three MG42s to me isn't worth it. And they're still very expensive to bring in because of the uh, half tracks. So it's all about availability, getting as many infantry units as you can in the with the 21st Panzer. Definitely what you should go for in the infantry tab in this deck. Moving on to tanks. Now this is quite an interesting one because it's the first deck that we saw with the Königstiger available. Now I'm not going to talk about the Königstiger straight away. Uh, we're going to start off by talking about the Panzer 35S and the Panzer 35 S uh, non-command. So this is the command version, the Befell Panzer, and uh, the non-command version. So I bring in one card of each, and the reason for that is because if you have a Befell Panzer 35 next to normal Panzer 35s, you basically get the same veterancy. So in order to have enough availability in Phase A, I bring in one card of each, keeping the Panzer 35 command at the back behind the other Panzer 35s. That's basically how I work it. And that's my Phase A tanks. You can obviously maybe mix around this, uh, not bring in any command tanks in Phase A and have six Panzer 35s. It just depends whether or not you're actually going to use them all because you are limited to a certain amount of points in Phase A. If you only have 10 minutes to work with, you get you know, your requisition points every minute. So you're going to get 850 points in phase A to work with. Easy to work out. Are you going to spend, you know, over half of that on tanks? Probably not. Which means four is generally perceived to be quite a good amount to get through. Now moving into phase B, I use quite a controversial combination of units. I have one card of the Befell Panzer IV. And I'm also using the Panzer 4Gs. Now a lot of people don't like the Panzer 4Gs because they have low front armor, six front armor. However, these things are absolute snipers if you bring them in with a Befell Panzer 4 or any other command unit. Give these three star veterancy with the 14 AP power main gun and these guys can definitely go to work. Yes, if they get hit, they are going to die. But uh, in my experience, they've always paid them off themselves off before doing so. And that's why I choose to bring them in on my deck. Aside from that, I bring in one card of the higher experience Panzer IVs to complement the, Pan the Befell Panzer IV. So if I want something with a little bit more armor and a little bit more infantry fire support and the Panzer 4H definitely does the job. You can actually opt to bring in a card of five of these in phase B but again talking about how many requisition points you're actually going to have available in phase B I generally don't tend to bring in more than four tanks so I might bring in two Panzer 4Gs and a Befell Panzer 4 and maybe one Panzer 4H in the entire phase. Now these uh Boitus, uh, Boitus Shermans, these are okay, but not great. They're fantastic in that they have three machine guns, a 50 cal and two 30 cals, but in front armor, I mean, it's okay. Again, it's higher than the Panzer IVs, which uh, is useful, but I much prefer AP power over armor for the Germans in a lot of cases because these Panzer IVs can very easily penetrate enemy Shermans for example and that's what I like to have is making sure they're high, high enough veterancy so that they can hit their shots when you need them to. 
So moving into phase C, that's where the fun begins in this deck. I, I would definitely recommend bringing in both the Königsteig uh, uh, with the two-star veterancy and the two Königsteigers with the one-star veterancy. Now the reason for that is because I tend to play quite a lot of 2v2, 3v3, 4v4 and so on. And I always find that if you're in phase C and you have these available, you will be bringing them in. And finding that you only have one available can be quite disappointing. So having more than one and actually having three available, yes, that is a lot of points. You know, you're going to be spending, what, 1,050 points on tanks, which does take a very long time to, you know, come about. However, I think it's worth having. I think they're worth having on your deck, and if you get to bring them all out, then your opponent's going to be pretty screwed. So, yeah. That's what I like to have on my deck for the tanks and I'm sure you guys may argue that having multiple Koenigstag is a waste. For 1v1 I would definitely say it is. Moving on to support, this is where things get interesting once again. So I always find the support tabs in, in, interesting because it they really, like the support tab is probably the tab that affects other tabs the most because this is where you choose your command vehicles. So for example, in phase A you can bring in the SBW223s. These provide a command radius which is very useful for infantry and so on. However in phase A I rely on my Befell Panzer 35 and my Panzergrenfuhrer for command. As we move on to phase B I then have the SPW232s alongside the Befell Panzer IV to provide my command. Now I have been tempted in this deck to swap out the Brumbar for another card of SPW232s for extra command units because I have been finding that I have been running out with this deck occasionally. But I'm yet to actually try out the Brumbar and uh, see if it's any good. The main issue with the Brumbar is that it has 25 HE. Well, that's not really the issue. The 1000 meter range is the issue. It struggles to get into a position without being fired upon by enemy armor. And that can be quite frustrating. It does have 14 front armor, which allows it to stay relatively safe. But I just haven't had a real opportunity to, to try this out properly, which is why it remains in my deck for now. Now in phase A, uh, going back to phase A, I know I kind of skipped it all, but I have got one card of these 259s. I love these armor cards. They're 35 points, incredibly cost efficient half tracks. I would recommend always bringing these guys in. They can kill, you know, like one infantry unit and they've almost paid themselves off already. And that's just how effective these guys can be. And they are absolutely fantastic for exploiting a break in the enemy's defenses fast move these down the road you're going to be causing absolute carnage now there is a very real opportunity that you know you should be bringing in these uh, 233s or 223s some people like to bring them in I much prefer bringing in like the phase B commands because like I said I rely more on infantry and the tanks in phase A when it comes to phase B the 232s do the job Always bring in phase A munitions, something that I like to do. Panzer 4C is pretty useless tank, four front armor is damn awful. And although they have a high HE versus uh, enemy infantry with the multiple machine guns, I just find that the auto cannons do the job way better. So, not really a choice for me. Phase B flamethrowers, just don't. <laughs> and well that's basically it for the support tab if you need more munitions you know where to go let's move on to anti-tank so there are a lot of interesting units in the anti-tank tab of this battle group in phase A you can get these uh, pack carriers they come with the 5 AP 2 armour just don't, they're awful Go for the pack 38s with the 10 AP power. 
These guys are much stronger and I would recommend bringing in most of these in phase A from the start of the game. You can also bring them in in these half tracks for an extra 10 points. It's tempting because half tracks are extremely useful. However, in my case, I just much prefer having cheaper cost units for the start of the game. And since they are generally used in the start of the game, that's why I like to uh, keep the cost low. You can also bring in this pack 43 in phase 8, and I would recommend it. Generally because it can basically one-shot anything in phase A. And people are going to be scared of it. It will draw a lot of attention and you can actually exploit that quite heavily. Now as for these Panzerstrack squads, these are interesting. They come with the half-track with the pack mounted on it. But um, I just haven't really found a use for them yet. Or just a space in my deck. Currently, with the cards that I have, I'm happy. And I don't find that I'm needing Panzer Shrex due to all of my inventory having Panzer Faust. And my armor being actually pretty strong. So I rely on, rely on AT guns. And moving into phase B, I have the Marder 1s. Now some people ask me why I don't use the S307 packs. These guys have 13 AP power, can be extremely good versus enemy armor, and obviously being very mobile is extremely helpful. However, I find that uh, I actually miss the strength available on the AT guns. So for example, these guys have five strength, whereas a pack, when it gets hit, it will just blow up and die. And this includes being side shot by a 50 cal, and that's not very fun, trust me. I just don't like the reliability of the low armor of these vehicles. Moving into phase B, again you have more chance to get uh, Panzer Shrex, up to you. You can get them now in the Kubels and the half track with the machine guns. Again I don't find Panzer Shrex very useful in phase B. You either bring them in phase A or not at all. I then have a card of the four Marder 1s. These have the 13 AP power uh, pack 40 mounted on them. These have uh, 1,200 meter range, and that's what you've got to exploit with these. Don't let them get in range of anything that's going to fire on them, because they will get one shot killed. Use them at max range, 1,200 meter range, or use them as ambushing units, and you will be fine. If you use them to engage medium range across a field, you're probably going to lose them. Don't let them get in range of 50 cows, because they can die too. Now in phase B, you can either get two pack 40s or you can get two pack 43s. Definitely get pack 43s. 22 AP power, 4 HE, can't go wrong with an 8 infantry, or an 8 strength as well compared to the 6 of the pack 40. You know, why wouldn't you? Let's be honest. The pack 43 is an absolute beast. The long 88 really does work. And one card of these definitely satisfies me on my deck. In phase C, I don't have any of these cards, however if you want upvetted Marder 1s then feel free. I don't particularly find them very useful for phase C and extra pack 40s again is pretty useless. The pack 43s will do the job nicely. Now one thing that I possibly would change in this tab is maybe a, swapping out the pack 43 in phase A for, the, for an extra card of two pack 43s in phase B. That depends if you find you're using the pack 43 or not. Up to you, test it out, see what you think. Currently I actually quite like bringing in the pack 43 in phase A. Right, let's move on to anti-air. Now this tab is probably one of the tabs that's actually changed the most for me on this on this battle group. I have currently uh, four of these SDKFZ-72s with the 37mm anti-aircraft gun on them. 1000 meter range with 9 HE power and very easily stun enemy aircraft from, from quite a long distance making the aircraft uh, not very effective before it even hits your units. The trouble is with this anti-air tab is that I don't have any anti-air in phase A 
which does mean that, that you do struggle. However, this is made up for the fact that you can bring in Phase A fighters. So that's something to be aware of. So I focus mainly on Phase B and Phase C and Tier to support my later game air units. So I've got two cards of the Phase B 37mm and half tracks. I find these guys the most useful because although they don't have any armor on the half track, having a mobile AA unit is really good for if you need to reposition it, if you need to move forwards quickly with your own units and so on and so forth. Having less mobile units like these uh, you know, round based you know, manned black 36s, they're not as good in my opinion. The only good thing about these guys is the fact that they do use a strength of 6 instead of the one shot kill mechanic that comes with the half track. That's something just to be wary of. Don't let them actually be bombed or they will die every time, <laughs> basically. And if they come under any fire, including 50 cal fire, they will die. Now in phase C, I also go for the double flak 88 combo. These are just so useful for like one shot stunning enemy aircraft um, especially well, when you have both of them together you just like bang bang and the enemy light aircraft is running away so bring them in together never alone and you will be having a great time with this anti-air that's pretty much my anti-air tab now if we look at the other choices we have these guys are okay uh, similar to the Verbalvin's uh, main gun however 800 meter range I find lets them down. The Gepards, useless, 20 mil, um, a 20 mil on it. Yes, they have extra accuracy, but it's not gonna do much. Um, same with these guys, absolutely terrible, and having two of these in phase A is just completely pointless. So there you go. You could use them as uh, ground-based fire support, but you know they're just not gonna do anything against the aircraft, and that's what this tab really needs to be focused on because you only have four cards available. Moving on to artillery, I absolutely love this tab. This must be one of the, well, one of the, my most favorite tabs that I ever opened on this game so far. There is just some seriously awesome units. So let's start off by looking at what we get in phase A. You can get the uh, normal mortar half tracks, the 85.10 HE uh, half tracks. These guys are always useful, in my opinion, to provide smoke cover and also to provide, obviously, mortar fire to suppress and kill enemy units like AT guns or just, you know, suppressing enemy armor and so on and so forth. They have so much use. Mortar carriers, always useful. You can also, however, bring in the Wielefachwerfer, which comes with 96 5 HE power rockets. This thing can fire all 96 rockets in one salvo. Yes, you heard me right. One salvo. It's pretty crazy and you can just saturate an area with these and keep them pinned down forever. And it's actually quite good in certain situations. Personally, I'm not too much of a fan. I very much like using my smoke and my, you know, HE mortars to be more precise. However, if you just want to stun an area, this is the thing for the job. I just personally haven't decided to bring them in. Moving on to phase B, you do have access to these FK-18s, longer range artillery units, not very useful can get uh, more mortar carriers. These guys come with the machine guns this time for an extra 10 points. You get a machine gun. Again, you shouldn't be losing these mortars in phase A, so you shouldn't need any more in phase B. Seems like a waste of a card for, to me. Um, but then you do get access to these Ryanwerfers, and these guys are awesome. They're multiple mortar carriers, and yeah. They fire 80mm mortars, they fire, how many is that, 16 of them in one go, like all at once. And they saturate an area with that 10 HE rounds. And you can also do the same for smoke, so you can make like a massive smoke barrier like instantly. 
and it's probably one of the most awesome and most useful units that I've found in the game so far. If you're going to attack an area, instead of using the Wielfachwerfer, use a Ryanwerfer because the Ryanwerfer will do a much better job. That's just the way it is. Mainly due to the fact that he, the Ryanwerfer has 10 HE and the Wielfachwerfer has 5 HE and will take twice as long before it actually stuns everything. The Ryanwerfer will do the job. Wait for these and they will pay off. In phase B you can also bring in one of the Lorraines. These have 1,600 meter range with 27 HE power. I found these to be relatively useful. It's uh, a work in progress. I don't tend to bring them in all the time, but I found they have a good use to uh, blow up enemy AT positions from range and um, enemy infantry in buildings. 27 HE power can flatten the building very easily. Now you can also get access to the uh, 39H with the 15HE, 2400 meter range. Basically a longer range, lower HE power gun. But to me, the Lorraine's just way more worth it. Looks exactly the same, basically the same model. But uh, just has less range and more HE power. To me, worth having in phase B. In phase C, if I need something with a bit more kick, then we've got the Panzer 35H with the Verflammen uh, launcher system. So 25 HE power, has four rockets, blasts those off and basically causes terror on the enemy as you advance. Very, very useful just to have for a little bit of shock and awe or you run in with your infantry or whatever else as you're trying to advance and that's what these little fellas are useful for you can bring in two of them for 100 points each very very nice indeed now here's a little interesting armored car with uh, 173 millimeter uh, field battery available wouldn't recommend bringing it in the off-map artillery is a little lackluster and so is the vehicle so that's pretty much my opinion on that and you can also maybe choose to bring in extra Lorraines in Phase C instead of Phase B, but I find in Phase B that's exactly when you want a 27 HE power Lorraine as opposed to waiting till Phase C. Now if we can have a quick look at air, we can see that this is a deck which has access to Phase A fighters, the ME109 G0. Now these are basically very important for controlling the skies early on in the game. You don't want to be overrun by enemy Spitfires. So these guys will do the job nicely. Bring them both in together and you can just double team enemy aircraft. Wouldn't recommend bringing in the JU-87s with the four, five HE power bombs. Completely useless. Barely do anything to anything they hit. So waste of points, don't bring them in. Moving into phase B, however, I do like to bring in two FW190G1s. These guys have the 15 HE power bombs, and they also have 570 km per hour speed with with good agility. So they can be used as multi-role fighters as well. Same as the ME109G2s with the 25 HE uh, rockets. So that's basically what makes up my air tab. There is a lot of options in the air tab. You can bring in the JU-88s with the multiple 7HE power bombs. Don't bring them in. Always bring in the JU-88s with the 25HE power bombs just because they're so much more effective. JU-87s with the uh, 12AP power cannons. Definitely a choice you could take. You can get multiple of them in phase C. The JU-88s in phase B not worth taking. Possibly bring in the fighters in phase B instead of the bombers. However, in my opinion, having the FW190G1 with the bomber bomb available compared to a fighter with more machine guns available or more HE on the machine guns available is uh, worth it. I much prefer having a bomber um, or like a multi-role bomber slash fighter than just a pure fighter in this case because you don't have as many cards to work with in your air tab. That's pretty much all of my units for the 21st Panzer Division. 
Let's have a quick chat about how they complement each other. So in phase A, I've been trying out recently bringing in the, I call it the three tank strategy where I use the Befell Panzer 35 alongside two normal Panzer 35s. And then I support that with the 259s. And then I just use my infantry alongside Panzergrenfuhrers. So I do the combination of one Panzergrenfuhrer, one uh, Panzergrenadier to take up uh, important positions with infantry. And then I reinforce the infantry more as I go through phase A. The Aufklara, or the Aufklara with the um, SPW-222s, they can be a very good choice instead of the 259s early on. And actually that's something that I might actually recommend. Bring in two of the Aufklara with the SPW-222s. Bring them together with the Panzer 35S and the, pa like the Befell Panzer 35 and the normal Panzer 35s. And that makes a really nice sort of squadron of units um, to push through the enemy lines. Then what you want to do is use your AT guns defensively in phase A. Bring in your pack 38s, possibly from the start if you can afford it. And then maybe bring in some mortars as well if you're needing the smoke support or just the ability to pin down enemy AT guns from range. If you're being harassed by enemy air force bring in your ME 109 G0s and then as you move into phase B you can start to rely more on anti-air and your multi-role fighters. You also have access to some very versatile artillery so use that in conjunction with your extra availability in Panzer Grenadiers and tanks to really make the push uh, onto your enemy. Then to finish them off moving into phase C bring in those Koenigsteigers and uh, yeah, just finish the job. The Werframen can really pin things down for you. If you know an AT position, then just smash it with a Werframen and your Koenigsteigers should be fine. And that's pretty much it. If you're running out of commands, bring in more SPW-232s. If you're running out of infantry, just, you know, use the Panzer Grenadiers you have. I tend to bring in these uh, units quite a lot the recon units in phase A and I use them to accompany my Panzer 35s instead of the 222s. So maybe you could bring in one Avclara with the 222s and a 231 as well. So possible combination. And if you're up against anything heavier, well pack 43s will do the job in the early game. And that's pretty much it. That is my 21st Panzer Division. Now some of this may change in the future. I think there's a lot of things that I need to possibly switch out. Um, because I do have a lot on this deck that relies on having the points in phase A. And when you only have 850 extra points to work with in phase A, you know, it can be a bit of a stretch to get all of the units out that I have currently in the deck. Either way, um, that's all for now. Let me know, guys, what you think of my deck. Uh, let me know your opinions on your own decks and what you have in your own decks. I always love to read your comments, of course. So leave them in the comments below. But in the meantime, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.